We're learning more about some of those who were lost in the Texas Outlet Mall massacre. This is the Cho family, mom Cindy and dad Q, and three-year-old James. They were all killed. Only six-year-old William survived and is recovering in the hospital. This family had just celebrated William's sixth birthday a few days before, and they were all going to the mall to exchange some presents. Presents. A GoFundMe for William Cho has already raised more than a million dollars. Um, I then started trying to triage the patients. The first person I reached was a young lady that was crouched in the bushes holding her head, and I don't want to be too graphic, but she uh, had no pulse, and I pulled her head back to make sure she's okay, and she had no face. She was gone. The second victim, uh, his eyes were just fixed straight ahead. He had no pulse. The third victim, um, I tried to do CPR, but he expired in front of me as well. Um, and then I found a little four or five-year-old boy falling out from under some of the victims and I managed to check him and get him secured away from the carnage that I saw. And fortunately, I got a uh, Allen police officer drove up at that time. We got him out of there as quick as we could. It was a horrific, horrific scene. On Monday, Texas DPS releasing the names of the adult victims, including 37-year-old Ki Sung Cho and 35-year-old Cindy Cho, 26-year-old Aishwarya Tatikanda, an engineer, 20-year-old Christian LaCour, his sister tells ABC he was an on-duty security guard and 32-year-old Elio Kumana Rivas. Among the victims are also children, a three-year-old boy and two sisters, eight-year-old Sofia Mendoza and 11-year-old Daniela Mendoza. Their elementary school principal saying the girls were rays of sunshine. Those who live to tell their survival stories say they search for safety where they could. Or like Israel Hill, who ran into a restaurant and heard minutes of gunfire, along with the sound of children crying and yelling for help. Pues es duro. At this, at this point, he says he's just feeling the survivor's guilt, especially because there were children who died. Yeah. Raquel Lee took this video from a bathroom closet with about a dozen other people, telling ABC's Matt Gutman she's now haunted by what happened. You actually heard the screams of the victims. I can't get them out my head. What's up, everybody? It's your boy here, Mike, for Flew the Coop. Uh, today, I want to start out this video by sending my sincerest condolences to the families of the people they lost, the loved ones they lost in this horrible shooting um, that we all know of by now in Allen, Texas. Actually, I would like to extend my condolences uh, to anybody who has lost a loved one at the hands of gun violence. I had two friends that were killed when I was a teenager and you know becoming a young man a young adult i had two really close friends that lived in my neighborhood uh that were killed uh at the hands of gun violence um one was in a gang um so it wouldn't be fair to say it was inevitable but it actually was my other really good friend um who i grew up with for several years um he unfortunately lost his life when he was walking his with his girlfriend home after she got off of work and the reason why I'm basically fed up and tired of looking at the mainstream media and politicians try to have real honest conversations about gun control and, and mental health, I think this is just um, all duplicitous at this point. Um, I remember being struck the most when I went to visit my friend and his mom informed me um, that he had lost his life, in fact. And I remember um, when I would see her from time to time, how vibrant she was, how, uh, how much she loved her son. This was her only son. And I remember the day when I saw her, how demoralized she looked, how drawn in her face was. She was missing teeth. She had become a shell of herself. So um, I'm not saying I have suffered personally, from anybody who has lost their life to gun violence, but I did have a really good friend who, in my family, I should say, uh, but I did have a really good friend. And um, this woman who I did not see moving forward uh, after that, but I know um, what she used to be and I knew what I saw when 
um, she had informed me her son lost her life. I, I believe she didn't even she couldn't even work anymore. She was she was basically a shell of herself. Um, so this is why I want to start this video. I'm nobody on this platform. This is a huge platform. I'm just trying to offer a, a voice. What I see right now in the political sphere is how these politicians and these pundits on these mainstream media networks are really doing all this hand wringing and trying to go before us, the American people. They're trying to have real conversations about gun laws and, and debate these laws as if something really radical will ever change. Um, you can't have an honest conversation in America, and these are this is my reason for saying so. Um, statistically, I've been reading that America has an excess of about 390 to 400 million plus guns that they can possibly account for because a huge number of them are unregistered, untraceable. So how is it we can have a real, how are people trying to go before us and really try to talk about how they're going to have a real honest and um, moral gun debate when in fact none of this can be changed? You're going to need radical legislation, which will never happen, because if you look at each side of the political aisle, you have one side, Democrats, arguing we need gun control and we need um, less rounds in a clip or a magazine, um, less capacity magazines. On the right, you basically have straightforward constitutionalists that believe in nothing but their, um, their freedoms and how in fact uh, they shouldn't be trampled on. And if this is the argument as if the Democrats to say the AR-15 is, even if you banned it today, I think there are roughly about 20 million still in circulation in America or at least in the hands of Americans. Um, somehow the Democrats can't seem to come to the grips with that. Uh, what if I want to do something bad? A bad person will find the means to carry out heinous crimes. So you can get handguns with 15, you know, perhaps bullets in a clip. What if I have five or 10 handguns with 10 or 15 bullets in a clip per, 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 per clip? I could still do the same damage, maybe not as frequent or as rapid, um, but it still can be done. If somebody's willing to carry that type of um, heinous crime out, it can be done. So this argument that is really deceitful on the, on the left, like, like somehow mental health and, and, and lack of multiple rounds in one singular clip is going to be the silver bullet and, and be the solution to this is crazy. We know where the Republicans stand. So they're, they're basically saying, hey, we just need to get more people. We need to get more people in positions to be able to ward off this type of crime or these types of crimes. But is that really a way for a, a, a person to live in probably the greatest country the world has ever seen, the most industrialized country in the shortest amount of time the world has ever seen? Are people sincerely happy really sincerely happy about the prospects of their children having to walk through metal detectors, um, their children having to have security guards and armed policemen, you know, in schools. Or do we need armed security to go to a movie theater? Do we need armed security to go to a museum? If you look at the state of America right now, and I would say for the past three decades, this is a country suffering from stage four pancreatic cancer, and there's no cure for this. When you have 400 million guns circulating in society, there is no way you can have a fair and honest debate about any eradication, and these crimes will continue moving forward. I, I, I can assure you probably by the months in, there's gonna be another mass shooting somewhere across the country. And um, it's just sad that Americans are suffering from such trauma and no wonder why our life expectancy has been lowered because Americans, in my opinion, are living with PTSD. People are war-torn and, 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 and battle-tested without actually having to set foot in an actual war. Living in America is almost the equivalent, in my estimation, as going to war as some of our precious veterans. Um, so if Americans as a whole are happy with um, in excess of 100,000 people being killed and injured permanently by gun violence, which is basically a football stadium, 
So Americans are, for, for the sake of protecting their freedoms, they're happy with 100,000 plus people of their country um, succumbing to gun violence and absolute death. And um, I, I just can't imagine a country, a uh, rational and functioning country, um, take this position. We can't go to movie theaters without worrying. Uh, we can't kiss our loved ones goodbye without the fear of hoping they come home a few hours later. We can't go to concerts. Uh, we can't go to restaurants. We can't have a dispute in the street. We can't have a small disagreement. We can't go anywhere without there being violence. We can't go to a, a grocery store. We can't go to a gas station. If Americans are sincerely happy living in this type of circumstances, then that means we are sick as a country because this is not normal. There are many countries around the world that don't have anywhere close to the gun ownership as we do. But even some of the countries that do have large amounts of guns circulating in their society don't have the same problems as we do. So I think we as Americans need to come to grips about why we are as we find ourselves in 2023 where we're a sick society right now. We need to push the reset button. I don't know what that looks like, but um, I just don't know what people can really put forward uh, on the table and really mean it. Because I think with all the, the gun lobbies, the people that are in huge support of these, these laws, these, these constitutionalists, then you have these zealots on one side talking about how it's, it's this fault and that fault. I think a lot of people really forget, and I know a lot of the Republicans like to champion Reagan, but you know, Reagan was the start of defunding all these mental institutions, these uh, mental health programs. Um, I don't know why they didn't like Jimmy Carter. I wasn't really born or I wasn't old enough then, but I, I know he was part of this huge, um, I guess, inflation, this period of inflation where people were waiting in line for gas or... I don't know why people sincerely didn't like Jimmy Carter, but it seemed like after his presidency, he really went on to go, do uh, fantastic things. So when I look at America and I think about when the decline of America began, for me, it starts with Reagan. If, if we as a society, as a country, have just been relegated to makeshift memorials, thoughts and prayers, T-shirts, balloons, and GoFundMe, then this is basically, this should give you an indicator about how sick the society is. Because at, at the end of the day, if this is all we can put forward, our thoughts and prayers and balloons and makeshift, um, makeshift memorials, then that means people have just resigned to the fact that this is the way the life will be moving forward. And if Americans are truly happy with that, then that's a sad state of affairs. Sometimes I think about this situation and I wonder if it's by design, if there's bigger powers at play that want things the way they are currently. Meaning if this is a weird form of eugenics or population control where we're just going to throw as many weapons into society, let them kill each other and that'll keep the population down in its, in its own weird, sick way. I know that probably sounds like conspiracy and I'm not trying to manufacture that. Um, but it does seem a little odd that we have two people on each side of the political space um, try to make these really shallow arguments, knowing good and well. These are educated people talking to us, by the way, looking straight into the camera, trying to sell us some really sincere talking points and, and sincere arguments why they think uh, this situation would be radically changed with really small and impotent legislation and I believe nothing will change with this piecemeal legislation, with these piecemeal talking points and all this bull jive that comes up every election cycle. Nothing will change fundamentally when it involves gun violence, gun restrictions, minimizing uh, clip sizes, minimizing one particular weapon over the other. I am not calling for weapons to be taken um, from the, the death grip of gun owners in America, but I am saying how can we really possibly have a true and honest argument where we're actually going to see real results, real results, when nobody's willing to take anything off the table on either side.
So people have to really come to the fact that if Sandy Hook didn't do it, I thought that was going to be the turning point. When you had babies and children slaughtered, that was going to do it. How many mass shootings do we need on an annual basis for the, this to take hold and, and people collectively just say enough is enough? I am not a gun owner, but I did own a gun and I acquired it illegally. And when I had that gun, it felt nasty. I was not, I was not ready, nor do I want to be responsible for something like that that could take a life, nor my own life by sheer accident. And the fact that Americans, and I know there's tremendously more good out there than there is bad, but isn't there a point where we could let's look in the mirror and say enough is enough? Like, can't we just, let's say we stop gun manufacturing as of today. We still have 400 million guns how many more guns do we need? And I'm not calling for authoritarianism. I'm just saying as a society, can't we just take a step back and maybe do we have too many freedoms or have we started to take our freedoms for granted? This is something I just constantly ask myself every day. And I'm, I'm just gotten to the point where I just had to make a video because I'm just one person and I'm just sincerely Sorry for my fellow Americans that have to endure this type of stuff, this, this PTSD that I know can't be easy for people. I, people's lives will be forever shattered for the sake of having a certain freedom. And if we're okay with that, then we can't expect anything to fundamentally change. And I guess moving forward, this is, will just be the life it is, the way it is, that we will just continue to have mass murders, mass shootings, and I guess that will forever be our legacy, that we, be, we became a society um, so entrenched in our um, beliefs and our constitution that we were not willing to budge, even if it means a stadium full of people are killed or injured every year.